Hey guys, Jeff here, and today I'm going to show you my system for strapping a ceiling. Now I would never let a client tell me they don't want me strapping their ceiling. I sure as hell would never build my own basement without strapping it. I'm going to go through all the reasons why you want to use this system, the benefits of it, and how to measure and install to make your life easy when you're renovating your basement. First of all, people ask me all the time in the videos, Jeff, why do you add strapping to the ceiling? And here's the reason why. If you take a look at this basement, for instance, I have a 19 foot span. With this particular floor joist, because it's engineered and it is exactly 16 inch on center, you would be tempted to just put the drywall up and, you know, and join on the seam and everything should be fine. But the reality is, in today's world, we're gonna have an intricate lighting design. We're gonna be using a lot of these slimline LED pot lights. What we wanna do is by adding strapping, it gives us the ability to have the electricians chase from one light across the ceiling and from this cavity to the next cavity without having to damage the ceiling, drill holes down the road. Gives you a lot of flexibility as a homeowner too with making modifications. You finish your basement one year and then another year, hey honey, let's get an overhead projector and a sound system. If you've got a strap ceiling, you can fish wire from all your potholes, not have to damage everything. That reduces your cost of work, right? That's a good benefit. Second benefit. Let's look up here. Every time somebody steps on this floor joist, that's spanning 20 feet. And if you put strapping on it and you nail it, every time they step on this floor joist, load transfers from here to here and from here to here. That means your floor is now three times as strong. Now upstairs, they've got engineered hardwood nailed in place. What that means is if this is your floor and every time you walk on it, it deflects. All of that nail is getting a lot of stress on it. And it starts to pull apart over time from the hardwood and the OSB subfloor. And that's where squeaks come from. Now it's not gonna happen in the first week, but it is gonna happen in the first couple of years. By the time you get 20 years in on a brand new build, you're not ready to throw in brand new floors yet, but if it's all squeaky because of deflection, you're gonna be tempted to go and spend more money where it wasn't necessary. Add strapping, stretch out your deflection from all of the foot traffic and extend the life of your flooring. The third reason I always strap is this, not everywhere you're gonna get engineered floor joists and not everywhere they're gonna be perfectly centered. A lot of times mechanical chases and everything else in the design and the way they lay out the house, the joists are on different locations. They're two inches apart or six inches. And so then the drywall would never land in the right spot. By strapping, you go install all your drywall opposite direction. When you're standing here looking at a ceiling, it's easy to see where the screws go because you can see the strap on each side. That makes your life easy. And when if you've got an easy situation to install your drywall, that makes installing drywall a lot more fun. Now here it is kids, this simple. 16 inch on center, which means from this side of the wood to this side of the wood needs to be 16 inches. So go ahead and measure and cut it. Perfect every time. Keep a spare piece of wood on you as a spacer block and get staples. Now I am using 12 foot long strapping here. If that's too long for you to manage, get the eights. But you know, the longer the wood, the more economical it is. I'm gonna push this board down until it hits my wall. I'm gonna line this up on my little mark. Done. Take my spacing block. Square it off. Done. Ah. <laughs> that reminds me, Max, remember? We did that one video where we were like, Gordon Ramsay making a burger. Strapping. On. Nail. In. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's the whole system. Now, I don't want you to run away yet because I got a couple more secrets for you. And here they are. When you're joining two pieces of strapping together, because these things are warped, they may not line up. All you do is go butt end to butt end on the strapping. And if they're not lined up, it doesn't matter. Then you come back with a few of these, go over top, nail through from the other side, and then make sure you're nice and flush. That'll keep your drywall insulation perfect. Another thing you're gonna wanna know, consider your layout for your lights. We're gonna have pot lights right down the middle and another run over here and the thirds, just a little bit off the heat run. I've already done the math, 16 on center, avoids all of my pot lights, which means I don't have to drill holes through the strapping later. So I think about the end from the beginning. It's okay to use more wood than you need. Like you can go 16, 16, 12, and then 16 again, again, and again. Remember the drywall is going the opposite direction. So just consider where your butt joints are gonna be. Measure your eight, 10 or 12 off the end. Make sure you got a strap where it goes. Avoid putting straps next to each other and having the drywall on the seam because house move, that will crack. Make sure your drywall seams, if you're going butt joints, are in the middle of the strapping. Other than that, one other quick note, you can see over here, I'll use this as a pointer stick. My ducting is really close to the bottom. I could not get an insulation bat in there. What I'm gonna do when I get to that side of the room is I'm gonna take my bat, I'm gonna tear it in half, because you can do that. Make it an R10, R12, okay? And then 
I'm going to leave my strapping loose. And then when I get over there, I'm going to pull it down, put that bat in, and then I'll nail it up. I want to have a little bit of mass underneath those duct lines. And I want to have a little bit of mass underneath this plumbing line. Same reason. Help kill the sound transfer, all right? At the end of the day, there's one other reason you want to use strapping, and that's this. I am building a bulkhead all around this room and putting lights in it. It's going to be beautiful. Stay with us on the whole project. 24 inches out comes to here. If I don't have strapping, I have nothing to tie this bulkhead into. But now that I've got my strapping run, I'm going to be able to tie my ceiling into the strapping all the way along, and I've already got myself blocked up and ready to roll. This is a much safer way to do this instead of using your hand. There we go. Now she's locked together. Ho, 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 ho. We'll just get this again. All right, the secret here is to laminate the joint together so that whatever you're installing on your ceiling isn't going to have an issue. Oh. If it splits apart on you, you can always force it back together and hit it again. There we go. Perfect every time. So let's just recap. Gives you flexibility for running electrical. It gives you more protection on your floor joists against deflection, which will extend the life of your flooring, especially if you have tile. Adding strapping almost eliminates the ability for the tile to crack because you kill a lot of deflection. It makes it very easy to install your drywall because you can stick your drywall up and you can see where the wood is and put a screw right next to it, right? It also gives you the flexibility to add that insulation in those hard to reach places where the bat isn't gonna stick there all by itself. At the end of the day, a couple hundred dollars of lumber, you can strap your whole basement and it provides you all that flexibility and protection for your investment. Once you put drywall on, you can't do anything behind the walls. So always consider the end from the beginning. Give yourself flexibility, make your installation easier, protect your home and renovate like a pro. Cheers.